Hi, I'm Kelton Effects, and in this video I'll be showing you how I created my Jorogumo doll. Jorogumo is a form of yokai or supernatural entity or spirit in Japanese folklore. She's commonly depicted as half spider, half woman, and preys on young men who are seduced by her beauty or her charm, and she eventually ensnares them in her trap and feeds on them. The name Jorogumo roughly translates to Entangling Bride or the Horse Spider, which is why the inspiration for my doll was the Oiran, which is a high-class prostitute that was common in feudal Japan. So the difference between Geisha and Oiran was that Oiran were high-class courtesans that had the choice to choose who their clients were, which I felt was very in line with what Jorogumo as a yokai was with her being able to pick and choose who her victims were. Oiran wear extremely lavish wigs and clothing. However, for my doll, I wanted to show off the lower half of her spider body, so instead of giving her a really lavish outfit, I kept most of that to her hair and had her playing a shamisen, which is a three-stringed Japanese instrument that was very commonly played by geisha or other entertainers. I'm also very fascinated by the whole concept of beauty and beast, which is why I wanted her to look equally repulsive and beautiful at the same time. She's covered in spiders and cobwebs, and there's egg sacs underneath her thorax with a lot of goo that's dripping all over the tatami. I started off with a ball joint doll, because since I usually work with Monster High dolls, I wanted to give myself something different to work with this time. So I found a base doll off of eBay, and I dremeled holes into where her eyes would be, and then filled those with epoxy sculpt. A lot of the work that I did used epoxy sculpt, like building the base of the spider. I used aluminum foil for the body and then covered that in Wonderflex, which is a thermoplastic, and then tried to build out the base and then sculpted over that with more epoxy sculpt. So once I was done with the base in Wonderflex, I started covering all the detailed portions using epoxy sculpt to smooth it out and to give it a bit more shape. And then I also sculpted all the egg sacs underneath her belly with more epoxy sculpt. I wanted to give them like a soft fleshy look, which is why I created like indentations and stuff in there. Next, after removing the legs, I combined the doll body with the spider base and I add more epoxy sculpt so the two would stick together, and then I smooth it out. Once that was done, I go back in with my epoxy sculpt to kind of create that fleshy fused look where it looks like her body is fusing into the spider. And once all the base sculpting was done, I went in with some sandpaper just to kind of smooth everything out. And here I'm sculpting the eyes, and they're done. I also sculpted some little pincers on her face just to have it flow a little bit more with the sculpture. I also ended up re-sculpting her breasts because I wasn't happy with how the base dolls were sitting. So I made them a little bigger and had them sit a little more naturally like how they would if she wasn't wearing anything. I also added some claws using some Warbler, which is another thermoplastic, and then used epoxy sculpt to blend that more down onto her hands. Next, I sealed the doll with Mr. Super Clear before I airbrushed a base coat for her skin tone. And then I used chalk pastels to bring out the contouring on her body and details on her face. For the base colors, I used brown for all the pincers and the base of the spider, as well as her hands, just because I was going to go in later and do some washes with a darker brown. Here I'm just painting in her eyes with some black acrylic paint. So 
So here's when I did the wash. I would apply a watered down acrylic paint and then wipe off the excess with a paper towel so that it would sit in the crevices and create more depth. I also spotted her hands and her body with the same colored acrylic paint just to give her that spidery look. Also just to break up the texture a little bit. Next I apply her eye makeup with a really tiny brush. Her eyes are done. Then I dry brush some purples into the egg sacs just to create more depth. Here I'm going over the ends of her pincers with a multi-chrome acrylic paint and I do the same for her nails. In addition to the oiled on hairstyle I was giving her, I want her to have some length on the bottom of her hair. So I glued on some wefts of hair and then I built up a base using foam clay. And while the foam clay was drying, I cut up some really thin fishing line and glued that onto her legs and her body to create the look of hair. And one of my favorite parts is glossing the eyes because it means I'm close to finishing. Well, the bottom half of her, of course. For the shamisen, I sculpted it out of warbler, and then I covered it with epoxy sculpt and then sanded it down to make it a little more smooth, and then I primed it with some Plasti Dip. The same thing with the pick, which is known as a bachi in Japanese. I covered the pick in gold leaf, and the same thing with the shamisen, just to draw your eyes to the props more, and make them look a little more visually appealing. I was going to use some fishing line for the strings on the instrument, but then I found some old jewelry I had lying around and I just cut off all the beads and used the string and glued that on. I also put some gold leafing on the inner corners of her eyes just to tie it in with her shamisen. So I actually redid the hair piece <laughs> because I wasn't happy with the first one that I did. And then here are all the hair ornaments that I made out of warbla and also covered them in gold leafing. Here's the finished hair piece after I glued on the hair. I didn't record the process because it was very tedious and there was a lot of trial and error to get it to look right. And here I'm gluing on the two ends of her hair and then cutting it off to the length that I want and then gluing in my hair ornaments. When working on this doll, I knew I wanted to make her a display base, so I decided to go all out for this one. I made her a paper lantern and then splattered some aged blood on it. And I also put an electric candle in there to create that flickering effect. I bought some doll sized tatami mat and dirtied that up so it would match the rest of the piece and glued that onto the wooden board. I'm gluing on her lashes here, and this time I actually bought some doll sized lashes because previously for my dolls I would use human sized lashes, but because her eyes were so small I just felt like they needed to be a little more delicate. I also wanted to emulate that dripping effect that I had in my sketch, so using some UV resin I created drips on the tummy mat as well as on her body and some saliva that was coming out of the pincers where the mouth area is. And I dirtied up the pus on the back with some alcohol paints just to distinguish the color from the spit on the front of the spider. I bought some tiny little flowers to decorate her hair because I just didn't want to have to worry about making tiny paper flowers. 
but I think they, they work perfect for the size of my doll. Now that the piece is almost complete, I'm doing a little set dressing by adding some cobwebs to the base. As well as to the back of her hair, like the veil I had in my sketch that was made of cobwebs. I also added little spiders to the display. I couldn't find ones tiny enough to match my sketch, but these are the smallest ones I could find. And here I'm just putting her shawl around her arms. I kind of like her like that, but for YouTube, I had to cover her boobs, so here I'm just wrapping some cotton fabric around her arms to create that gauze look that I had in my design. And I finish off by signing my name in gold paint. And here's the finished piece. Well, I really hope that you liked my Jorogumo doll and that you enjoyed watching me create her. I had a lot of fun making her, although it was a really long process, but I'm really happy with how she turned out in the end.